All right, thanks for tuning in uh, for another physics lesson with Mr. M. Uh, in this lesson, we are going to be solving for a conservation of momentum type problem. Uh, in this case, it's going to be an inelastic collision. Uh, in other words, after the collision, both of the objects are going to stick together. Okay, so our problem here is we have a 2,000 kilogram truck. It's traveling eastward at 10 meters per second, and it rear ends a 1,400 kilogram car that was stopped at a red light. The collision caused both vehicles to stick together. What is the final momentum of the vehicles? Okay, so once again, um, when we're talking about these um, conservation of momentum problems, we have the, the understanding that the total initial momentum is equal to the total final momentum. Okay, and the way that we would represent this mathematically, it looks like something like this. PI is equal to PF. Okay, our total initial momentum is equal to our total final momentum. Um, in the case that momentum has the symbol or case P. Okay, and just to recall our momentum equation, P is equal to m times v, um, our mass times velocity. Okay, so in, in this case we do have two objects, and one of the things that I always teach my physics students is we really need to read the, the problems carefully, and we need to pick out the appropriate information. Okay, and so what I know is I have a 2,000 kilogram truck, and we know that it's traveling eastward at 10 meters per second. Okay, what we need to um, solve for is we are going to end up solving for its final velocity, but we'll get to that in just a second. We also have our car, okay, and we know that initially um, we have 1,400 kilograms, and it was stopped at a red light. So we know that its initial momentum was really zero because its initial velocity is also zero. Okay? What's unique about these inelastic um, collision problems is that what we have to do is we actually are going to have to add up the two vehicles um, together to get our final momentum. Okay? And so let's take a look at how we end up doing that. Okay? So initially I'm going to need to know the mass and velocity of the truck and I'm gonna have to add that to the mass and velocity of the car. Now that's gonna have to be equal to the combined total of the mass of the truck plus the mass of the car and their velocity. Okay. So what, one of the things I like to do is because I know the total initial momentum has to equal the total final momentum, I, I try to separate the two sides and set them equal to each other, almost like two, two separate problems. Okay? And then all I have to do at this point is I have to um, just plug in my appropriate information. I know that the mass of my truck I designated as my um, yellow highlighter, uh, and the mass of my car was the green information and the total momentum of both vehicles um, was in this orange color. Okay, So this is the hardest part of these problems is actually setting them up because all we have to do at this point is just plug in our information. So I know that the mass of my truck was 2,000 kilograms and I know that its velocity was 10 meters per second and I need to add that to the mass of the car which was 1400 kilograms and it was initially stopped so it has a zero meters per second as its initial velocity. Now that's going to have to equal the total momentum of both of the vehicles combined. So here's where we have to add the two masses. So it's going to be the 2000 kilograms plus the 1400 kilograms and we don't know the velocity. That's what we're trying to solve for here. Okay. Um, one of the things that I failed to mention is that the truck was traveling eastward. Okay. And one of the things that we tend to do with, with physics is we try to draw some um, 
kind of a, a force diagram or a diagram of what's happening here. Um, and so my truck is traveling eastward at 10 meters per second. And in this case, my eastward value, I'm going to make a positive value. Okay, and so when we get our, our, our final answer of our velocity here, if that velocity ends up being a positive value, then I know that they were traveling eastward. On the other hand, if this velocity ends up becoming negative or a negative value, then I know that they were traveling westward because that would be in the opposite direction. Okay, so I know there's many types of problems like this where you're going to have to be setting up a positive or a negative value based on the direction of the object's movement. Okay, so back to our problem here. All we got to do is our calculations. Um, 2,000 times 10 is going to give me 20,000. I'm going to add that to 14 times 0, which is 0. And so I know on the left side here, I'm going to have 20,000 newton seconds, which is the units for momentum. And on the other side here, I'm going to have my 2,000 plus 1,400 gives me 3,400 kilograms times the velocity. The nice thing about this problem is um, I don't really have to do too much. I've already kind of um, separated my uh, unknown value from my, my known value. So all I have to do at this point is get this velocity all by itself. So we are going to divide by 3400 on both sides. And when we do that, our final velocity comes out to be 5. 0.88 meters per second. The fact that this is a positive value tells me that the two vehicles were also headed in the eastward direction, which would make sense because if two cars are, if one car is going to rear end the other, they definitely would not be going backwards. Okay, and so there is our final answer. Hopefully, this video is helpful for you in solving your own conservation momentum problem. Thanks for tuning in.